I'm going to put a like, the best of it and put it, and put it in the video called a day or real. It's so allowing you to do this. Damn, it's so tight. Harder, Sam, harder. Oh, no, 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 no. Right, the... This, um, this business of heredity, heredity means inheriting features or characteristics from your parents. Of course, if you've re been reproduced asexually, where you've got a single cell just turning into two, like yeast, which is a fungus, or bacteria, they don't have two parents. They have a single parent, which is a single cell, which, which just, when the time is right, starts out as a single cell with its nucleus and then at a later stage that nucleus starts to divide into two then the whole thing divides into two and eventually we end up with two Bugs, can you not talk over me, please? Could I turn my back? You know, it's like conditioning, isn't it? Teacher turns their back, that's kind of, that's you've learned that since you were four. Cue to talk. It's a cue to talk, yeah. D don't, please. Because I'm still talking. So we've gone from that, to that, to that. Not an amazing diagram, but it gives you the idea that we've got a single cell it's called binary fission. Binary is two, fission means splitting, you know, like nuclear fission, the way we make energy for our electricity. So binary fission is the way cells divide asexually. Now it goes without saying that if they've done that, they've had to copy the DNA inside the nucleus. So both nuclei have got exactly the same DNA. In other words, we've got a clone. So bacteria are all clones of one another, and fungi are all clones of one another. They do not reproduce sexually. Sexually, sexual reproduction means two parents. Now, in other words, sexual reproduction to a human being is, is a value-laden term, because sex to us is one of the most powerful instincts that we're born with. We've got to be born with that powerful instinct, otherwise we're going to become extinct. So it's, it's designed to be a very powerful issue. But for us, it's all about the business of getting the sperm to the egg. And what a lot of fun that is. But it's not the important point. The important point is that the male cell, the gamete, does actually meet the egg. And in the plant and the animal kingdom, and remember most plants and most animals reproduce sexually, the male cell and the female cell come together without all the paraphernalia that human beings go in for. Yeah? The pollen is actually blown towards the ovule. Or carried on the body of a little bee. Yeah? Can you not talk about this? It's still sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, two parents. And two parents, as we've already said, leads to variation. Jack, can you add a, I'm giving you the choice. No, don't do, don't react like that. It's, that's how you used to react all the time. Just, just either keep quiet or go somewhere else in a quiet corner and think deep thoughts. <laughs> yeah. So sexual reproduction is variation, and variation is one of the drivers of evolution. Evolution is driven by two things. One is variation, and the other, maybe you know it already. Mutation. Mutation, you do, well done. So, because we're all different, when circumstances change, when our environment change, changes, some of us stand a better chance of surviving than others. And the survivors are the ones that hand that characteristic onto their offspring. The dead ones are just dead. 
their characteristics, which didn't work, die with them. They haven't got any offspring. Yeah? Now, that on its own does not explain evolution. Yeah, we're all different in this room, but we're actually not radically different. We're pretty much the same. In fact, in terms of DNA, we're 99.9% .9 the same. So, something else must be at work, and the something else is random mutation. And we're suffering at the moment from random mutation in nature. The famous swine flu, which has now been renamed H1N1, nothing to do with... They've renamed it for the obvious reason that you cannot catch it from pigs. It's got nothing to do with catching it from pigs. It's to do with mutation. Remember viruses are, because they reproduce so fast, do you know how, how viruses make you ill? How do viruses make you ill compared to bacteria? We, they go bit of revision. They do, go on. And you can't kill them with anti-bacteria. Yeah, never mind that. How, how are they killing you? Uh, they affect them, they'll be able to reproduce themselves. Indeed. So what, what does the damage to you? What gives you the symptoms? No, that's... It's the sheer number. They're destroying cells. Viruses are destroyers of cells. They, they do exactly what Ben says. They get inside the cell. They, repro they reprogram the nucleus to think its job is just to make viruses. So they turn the, the cell into a virus-making factory. When those viruses are manufactured, they literally split the cell open and travel out to infect other cells where the same thing happens. So it's actually causing cell damage, a virus. The bacterium is different. Bacteria reproduce anywhere. They don't have to get inside the cell to do that. They find somewhere warm and comfortable. They'll just divide and divide and divide and divide. But they produce toxins, poisons, and that, that's what gives us the symptoms from bacteria. So a viral infection and a bacterial infection are different. Now at the moment, the H1N1 virus, you know, like all viruses, it's is, is, yeah. it's what's happened is that it was originally a virus that only infected pigs and closely related species. Now viruses do not jump species. We can't catch cattle viruses, they can't catch ours. You know, dogs don't catch cat viruses and vice versa. It doesn't happen. Because the virus is specifically designed to live and reproduce inside a particular species. Okay? Now, viruses do always mutate, which means that when you caught your cold this year, and I've just got over one, you get the same symptoms, you get a runny nose and you feel rubbish, but it's actually a different cold to the one you got last year. It's a different virus. It's mutated in a year. It's changed slightly. Makes you feel bad, but if it was the same virus as last year, you wouldn't get it again. You'd be immune. That's right, like you are to chicken pox and measles that you have when you a kid. There's not, there's never a cure to you can't find a cure to something that's constantly changing its coat. That's right, because your body doesn't recognise it quickly enough to rub it out before it has a chance to do damage. Now, imagine the swine flu situation. We talk, this is a classic case of mutation. There was a mutation. It happened, we think, in Mexico. It's totally random. It's got nothing to do with Mexico. It could have happened in Yama. It could have happened anywhere. But a virus mutated, and such was the mutation that suddenly this virus that would never have infected human beings at one point could. It jumped species. Come in. It jumped species. Sorry, man. Okay. Well, you said it was impossible. It is impossible that for that virus to jump species is, but if it mutates into a different form, yeah, it changes its protein coat to different shape. Yeah. 